Thanks for joining us on the John Mandola Show. We are driven by McCarthy Tire Center. Jim Martin joins us, Luzerne County Hall of Fame. Uh, Jim, uh, always a pleasure to talk with you. And uh, boy, there's a lot of news going on uh, with the Hall of Fame. And of course, you know, right now we're all dealing with this pan- pandemic, uh, which is unfortunate. And obviously our, our thoughts and prayers are with people and their families and to get better. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, from from your perspective, how things are going right now with this pandemic. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to sit and speak with you this evening uh, concerning our organization. What we're doing is trying to not lose a step uh, in in lieu of the fact that uh, uh, we are socially isolated from everyone. Uh, we are an organization that has regular meetings and uh, we. We try to stay abreast of what's going on in a community because we are a true community service organization. Uh, We we are involved with a number of different uh, entities, uh, Challenger Baseball, Special Olympics, the Hazleton Integration Project, Juvenile Diabetes, and um, we have another one that we'll speak about a little later on because we're making a great stride with with what we're doing for uh, for our community. what we're doing as an organization, we're trying to get out and be actively involved. Uh, we've had people volunteer with CEO to uh, create boxes of non-perishable goods to give to the elderly and to give to uh, uh, the public in general. Uh, I know that the All One Foundation gave over a million dollars to um, a lot of food banks and uh, we are actively involved with All One uh, in, a, in a number of regards. Challenger Baseball and now with their helping of all of the, uh, the, the food stuffs. So uh, we are also um, an arm for uh, Commissioner Pedri's task force and uh, Ted Wample, the uh, executive director for the Luzerne County Visitor and Correct- uh, the uh, Convention Bureau. And uh, what we've been doing is taking their um, information they've been placing on the internet and we've been placing it on all of our social media in both English and Hispanic to uh, try and help our community remain uh, totally uh, informed of, of, of what they need to do to first of all stay safe and to help us to quell and try to flatten this curve. Well, people can check out the website, which is Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame.com. Hey, let's go back to the fall. A couple of football teams from our area, a couple of field hockey teams. Uh, wow, sensational stuff. And, uh, I know uh, uh, you and and the people with the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame want to, you know, acknowledge uh, those teams from last year. What we did, uh, what we do every year, we've been so blessed to have a place at the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport. Uh, Executive Director Carl Beardsley allows us to have an exhibit there, and we place. We are working cooperatively with the Northeastern chapter of the Pennsylvania State Hall of Fame, the Scranton Lackawanna chapter where they have items and artifacts in this display. And we have all of our uh, inductees from 2019, we have an actual physical artifact that they use during their competition. We have two Olympic jerseys in there. We have uh, newspaper articles from 1969 uh, for Brooke Yeager winning uh, the AAUs. We have uh, the actual scorebook for the Tunkhannock Girls Little League when they won their first state championship. Um, it's amazing, Bronk, um, Frank Majikus uh, and what he does with the PIAA. We have his Killer B Award uh, in there. But what what we have done is, even though that that's a, a year long type of uh, exhibit, we we have something that takes us into a current event type of situation, which is called the Hall of Fame Sports Spotlight. And what we did was we solicited the the two football teams that reached the state finals, which was Wyoming area and Dallas, and the two field hockey teams, which is Wyoming Seminary and Wyoming Valley West, what they provided for us was an actual game jersey and the medal that they garnered in the state championships. So that that's in the display. Unfortunately, not a lot of folks are getting to see it right now because it's at the airport. But as we start to break out of this uh, isolation, uh, I'm hoping to have that to be something that people really embrace. Over 200,000 people go through that airport a year, and if a fraction of them see what we 
place in there. And we've gotten such outstanding and glowing response to that. Uh, and that comes directly from their executive director, Carl Beardsley. State inductees. Uh, do we have a few of those uh, this, this, this time around from Northeastern Pennsylvania? Well, the 2020 class, I mean, we were going to have our banquet, which was slated to be August the 9th at Genetti's. We always have it the second week of August every year. We had to cancel it. It was just, um, it was in the best interest of the public to, and our service to the public to not have that. But what we did was we rescheduled for December the 13th, which is the second Sunday in December. So we're in a, we're in a hovering pattern right now. We're, we're, we're trying to see what the state allows us to do, how many people we're allowed to bring into a situation like that. And if we have to scale it down from a full-blown banquet, which last year we had almost 400 people at the banquet, uh, and, uh, we have 13 uh, living inductees and two deceased, um, we might just have a luncheon just to do something because we don't want this to be a gap year. There are so many people, we, we get so many emails on people who, who feel that their family members are deserving to be inducted. And, and we feel that everybody is deserving to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, regardless of the stature. And we had some pretty outstanding candidates. We were looking at George Toma. Uh, he, he was in contact with us and he's, he's the sod god. And a uh, little known fact that Red Grange is from Sullivan County and we embraced Sullivan County. I got in touch with his, his granddaughter, the only living relative left of Red Grange. And uh, we were we were entertaining the thought of uh, her coming in from Chicago to do this with us. But uh, if we have to tailor it to uh, a more intimate setting, we will do that. We're hoping not to have to not have it at all this year. And you know, you mentioned working with uh, different organizations, a CEO, a Hospice of the Sacred Heart, an organization uh, which you're you're working with as well. That uh, that is something that we we just brought aboard. I was watching the news the other day, and there was a, a sister a, a sister of mercy named uh, Gabrielle Wynn from UPMC Hospital in Williamsport. And what she was doing, she was taking iPads around, and people who were at the end of life or near the end of life who couldn't have contact with their families. They were dying in isolation and it wasn't a it, it, it was just a horror horrific thought for that to happen so i contacted uh dr patrick kilduff of the uh, hospice of the sacred heart and i asked him is there any way that we can be involved with something of that of that nature and he says well they're already doing telemedicine and uh what they do is th if they go into the house and the person or the facility and they serve nine counties in northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, if there is a chance that a family member may not be able to be there for the last moments, because in hospice, you try to spend as much quality time as you can uh, before the passing. And what we suggested was, would we be able to purchase an iPad from our organization, from the Zern County Sports Hall of Fame, provide it to the Hospice of the Sacred Heart and let them take it to facilities and homes and help people embrace that last few moments that they may have. There may be a relative in California that wanted to get here and it's just not timely, it's not going to happen. Well, they can get together and they can, they can talk and they can share. And uh, we're gonna be, we're in the process right now. I have it on order, it's coming in. We're going to be providing with the Hospice of the Sacred Heart with an iPad to uh, help uh, our, our palliative care uh, families. Also, we are on the drive right now to collect smartphones because um, they have a, the Hospice of the Sacred Heart has an, a, a deal with Verizon where they'll repurpose these phones and provide them for homebound and palliative care individuals to use. And one interesting thing that I never even thought of was there are children that they that they treat therapeutically uh, with Hospice of the Sacred Heart uh, that have lost a parent and they're grieving 
and where normally they'd have play therapy, art therapy, music therapy, things of that nature, they can't get in contact. They can't physically be with the kids. So what we can do is we can provide smartphones. So we're on, we're on the on the hunt right now. So if you have anybody in your view, viewership that wants to donate a smartphone, a droid, something that they can go ahead and uh, have visual recognition for, I'll come to their play. I'll come. I'll come pick them up myself, and, and I'll take them. And we're going to get them refurb because what Dr. Kilduff told me was, was a lot of times you'll see slumping shoulders, not making eye contact with the with the screen, and those are visual cues um, that tell the therapist that the child may need some support, may need some extra support. So we're that we're really embracing this, working hard at this right now to try to make this happen for them. Jim, I think um, you have been the, the head dog here in the sense of it's it's so much more than just sports and the stories that you're sharing with us that the community is such an integral part here. And I know it holds a, a, a real soft spot for you in Northeastern Pennsylvania and all the people that have come before you that have been great. Um, and then you've seen your own kids go through and enjoying that time and now here um, after your kids have gotten a little bit older, you're still you're still rooting for the high school athlete or the college athlete, and it doesn't matter what sport. Uh, talk about your team uh, of what uh, the people with the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame are just trying to gather all these ideas and just keep pushing and pushing to to grow in so many different ways. You hit the nail right on the the head, John. What we're doing is we are embracing the community, not just from a sports standpoint, we're using sports as the springboard because the thing that, the number one thing that sports teaches you is cooperation and, and, and team, the team concept. And myself as president, we have a vice president, executive secretary, a historian. We track every single article that we put in the paper, every, every news media source that we deal with. We deal with five counties. We deal with over 25 different newspapers all the news services and we have been very fortunate in the regard like yourself giving us time to speak about what we do what we've learned from sports what we've taken from it and how we give it back to the community this is the past and the present shaking hands and this is what we try to get across to this to the uh the community we go back to these athletes and we say how do you want to give back to the same community that supported you through your your glory time? And you know how, how can you offer this? And you can use us as the vehicle to do that. And that's that's what we're trying to do. And, and the present part, the scholar athletes, uh, uh, every year honoring those scholar athletes. Over the last, we reinstituted that process in the last three years. We hit the Wilkes-Barre area first. We did Coughlin Myers. Uh, and Redeemer and GAR, each one of them got a, a $500 scholarship. We we have a boy and a girl. Uh, the guidance departments, we work very, very cooperatively with them. They go ahead and they, they give us two candidates. We have a selection committee. Uh, they have to answer six questions. They have to give us their GPA. They have to provide us with uh, what school they're going to, their acceptance letters. And it's a, it's a very tedious process. Uh, Last year we did Freeland MMI, Hazleton, and Crestwood, and this year we're doing Wyalusing area, Sullivan County, and Berwick. So we have touched all five counties uh, that we represent. It's, I know it's, it, it says the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame, but it's a lot bigger than that. And the support that we're receiving from all these counties is amazing. So we already we already had our, our uh, athletes uh, submitted a boy and a girl from each one of those schools, and just two days ago we voted on, and we will still be giving the three five hundred dollars scholarships to a boy or girl from each one of those school districts. It's awesome to hear. People want to get more information. I'm like, hey, I, I want to know is is this guy from Nanny Cook? Is he in the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame? So they can check it out on the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame .com. That's correct. We also have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter account. We're on Instagram. We are, we are a bunch of old people embracing the 21st century. Uh, 
we are provide we are doing all of our meetings by Zoom now. I mean, I, and not I'm 62, okay? And I'm kind of maybe one of the youngest people in the group, but we have people who are motivated, people who are knowledgeable, people who are skilled at at reaching out to the community, bringing back what's what's needed there so that we can bring it to the table, discuss it and act on it. And um you can find us at, you know, we're on, like I said, we're on Facebook. We do a throwback Thursday all the time. And we, we, uh, right now, uh, we have all of our athletes, which were inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, have received their own article in Happenings Magazine. Uh, they are, they do a complete, right now, I think this month is Morgan Kraft of Sullivan County. She is, in our case, up at the airport. We have her Olympic uniform. She got fifth at Rio, the Rio Olympics in shooting in skeet shooting and this is in baseball boxing basketball football we embrace everybody figure skating and um the administration portion of sports like uh the piaa uh, frank Manjikas. Uh, we are gender equitable we we had last year for the very first time a uh handy capable individual a, a young girl who got a gold medal in the World Special Olympics in 1995, Tracy Trebendis. And she is, stands right alongside of all of the other athletes that we have inducted since 1985. Jim, your, uh, your work has been tremendous. Your team's work has been uh, honorable. And I uh, just love what the message is from the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame. And not just, as you said, not just Luzerne County with what you've done in the, the surrounding uh, counties as well. Um, appreciate all the great stuff that you're doing and continued support. And uh, if people want to check it out, of course, they could check out the website. But uh, a pleasure to, to speak with you and, and discuss Thank all you. the great stuff going on. Uh, right now, uh, I don't know if you, if you saw in the paper, we're updating all the biographies. When you go to our website, you can see every candidate who was ever elected into the Hall of Fame. And what we're trying to do right now, since we have this time, anybody who has any changes to their biographies, any updates, they can go to lcshof at gmail.com and they can send all of their biography, uh, new biography information in, or you can contact me at E-Y-E-S-M-A-N-185 at AOL.com. That's Eisman185. And I'll make sure that we we give you your due. And and on behalf of our organization, John, it was a pleasure to have you be the first media person that we ever inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, for from the meet for our media award. And and you're so deserving of it. And we're proud that you allowed us to to honor you in that way. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very, very kind words. I appreciate it. Jim Martin from the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you for your time and uh, stay safe and be healthy. All right. Thank you very much. Flatten the curve. Let's get it done. <laughs>